Hi and welcome to module six of the Agile Operations Fundamentals course and this one's all about Agile value stream mapping. It's one of the most powerful techniques around and we're going to learn it today in a very short time. What is Agile value stream mapping? Well, Agile value stream mapping is based on the lean value stream mapping technique, but it's a very light, fast version. It takes place in a collaborative workshop setting and it's ideal for business processes as opposed to very complex manufacturing processes. Now, lean value stream mapping sometimes could take anywhere between two to four weeks of work and they go down to the very lowest level and they have very structured ways of doing it, which is fine for certain circumstances. But uh, this version, the agile value stream mapping can be done in a couple of hours and we're gonna learn how to do that. So there are some key rules here. The first rule is get the key stakeholders together based on the process scope that you choose to map. And we're going to talk about that. What is the process scope at level one? Once you get this, make sure you have the actual people who do the work present, people who understand the processes. Now in every business, there's always someone who knows these processes inside out and it's in their heads. So don't get the the architects who think they know how it should work or the process designers etc get the actual people who do the work make sure it's a facilitated workshop make sure you get a facilitator in who knows how to do value stream mapping and ensure there's sufficient space wall space and keep it approximately a day it can be anywhere between four hours to a day in very very rare circumstances it would go to two days but that's very rare. Most importantly, keep it simple and keep it low fidelity. You do not want to use any value stream mapping tools and complex uh, flow charting tools, etc. It's just a sticky notes and string. And the focus is on the conversation and on understanding of the process itself. Do not try to map the exceptions, just stick with the 80% flows. And lastly, the focus is improvement not blame. It's not to find fault as to why something is not working. It's about documenting reality and the focus is absolutely on how do I get better. So how do we do value stream mapping? The first step is to identify the high level process, the level one process. So here is an example of a HR recruitment process. You define the job, you advertise it, you select the candidate, you make them an offer and then you onboard them. This would be, for example, level one. Now, once you've done that, you identify the key stakeholders and the departments and the people involved in this process. So use some sticky notes, do a stakeholder mapping process and put up the names and departments and people involved in handling this process. Once you've got that done, you then represent the involved stakeholders as swim lanes. So what this means is actually putting these stakeholders names up on the wall in this sort of an order. You can do it vertically or you can do it horizontally, it doesn't matter, and then draw swim lanes between them. So now we're going to map the processes in between these swim lanes. Fourth point is you start mapping the as is process at level two within the swim lanes using sticky notes. Now, sometimes I even use string to connect the sticky notes, but you may not need that. You can just uh, assume it or just draw a line in between if you can. What you would do is you would take the level one and then drill down into it. So here you would identify the vacancy. Uh, then the department manager would write a job description. Uh, they would then send it to the HR advisor for approval. The approval would come back. This person would send it to the agency maybe to get uh, a request for proposal to make an estimate uh, to make the ad. If you're making a nice uh, graphic image of the advertisement, you'd then send that for the artwork. And finally, they may send it to the recruitment company to place the ad in the newspapers. Now, this is just a sample process, but this is the process you would go through with the entire group using sticky notes in a facilitated way. Uh, don't worry about exceptions, as I said, and all those peculiarities. Once in a way we do this and sometimes we do that. We'll come to all that later. Try and cover the 80% of it. Now, once you've done this, you've then got to estimate the 
average activity time per step and the wait time in between steps. So the activity time is the time it takes to do this step. So for example, this step, identify vacancy, uh, takes maybe 10 minutes. And the wait time is the average time that is taken before the next step can start. Now here you have 480, which is one day, for example, which has eight hours, uh, 60 minutes, it's 480 minutes. So try and keep everything in minutes because then you can calculate the percentages quite easily. Now do this exercise for all the steps and the wait times in between the steps. Once you've got them done for all of them, what you can then do is calculate the process efficiency percentage. Now this is the total cycle time, which is TCT, which is the activity time plus the waiting time. So the activity time plus the waiting time for the entire process is the total cycle time. The time an activity takes to go from that end right to the end. Now the process efficiency percentage is the activity time divided by the total cycle time and shown as a percentage. And I'm going to show you in the next slide how we calculate this. So let's try and see how we calculate the process efficiency. So let's supposing there are three teams, team one, team two, and team three. And we have our swim lanes in between them. And we have three simple steps. We have step one, S1, and that flows into S2. Yeah. And then we have S3 after that. So three simple stages. Now let's supposing S1 takes 10 minutes to do, and then we have a day waiting time in between. Step two takes 20 minutes, and then we have half a day. So let's say that's four hours. And then we have step three, which is 20 minutes as well. Now, we then convert this one day into 480 minutes. So let's go to minutes and this becomes 240 minutes. So if we calculate the total cycle time, yeah, that is equal to the 10 plus the 480 plus the 20 plus the 240 plus the 20, which is equal to 770 minutes. The activity time is equal to 10 plus 20 plus 20, which is equal to 50 minutes. So now we calculate the process efficiency percentage, which is equal to the activity time divided by the total cycle time, which is equal to 50 divided by 770 and shown as a percentage. So there you get it. That equals to a total of 6.49%. And that's how you calculate it, the process efficiency for the entire process. Now this helps you very simply to zoom in later on and find out where your waste is. So you can say, look at that. We've got 480 minutes there. How can we reduce that 240? Can we automate something there? So this process helps you identify where you are and you can track process efficiency after you've made the changes to see is your total cycle time improving and getting better. So once you've done your value stream mapping, you can then look at it and try and see where you can improve. Now, normally the problems just scream out at you and you'd be surprised. You say, why are we doing these steps? Why does it take so long between these two stages? And then you start the conversation on how do we get better? How do we improve this process? Here are some tips and pitfalls. The first one is don't go down to task level. Stay at level two or three when you're doing value stream mapping. There may be a tendency to go down to activity level and uh, 
you know, write down which spreadsheet you fill in and how you enter it in the system, but stay away from that. The other thing is don't map exceptions. Try and stay with the 80% flows. Don't bother about those um, odd occasions. In terms of making intelligent guesses with regard to activity time and wait time, most processes when you do this, you won't have these numbers. So you have to make an intelligent guess. And don't split hair about is it four hours or is it five hours or is it on average four hours or eight hours. Just make a guess and start. Try and come to some agreement over there. Map reality, not what it should be in the process document, not what uh, the business process analyst says it should be. Uh, don't go from a document. Just talk to people and map what they think the process is currently. Don't be surprised how low your initial process efficiency percentage is. Normally, I've seen them in single digit numbers and look at it as a great opportunity to improve. And when you look at the map itself, uh, you will see tremendous potential to improve it. Focus on reducing wait times first, and then you can look at optimizing the activity time later on. So this would give you a lot of quick wins. There's a lot of low hanging fruit there, and it gives the team a great amount of energy because they're able to see direct results and improvements in small iterative cycles. Keep it simple. Don't bother about using a complex lean icons for each step and following process rules about connectors and different diagrams, etc. Don't bother about using any automated tools. Keep it simple, as I said earlier. And lastly, be honest about why some things take so long. Uh, it's not about blame. Uh, have an honest conversation. It may be because you don't have enough of resources. It may be because somebody is very busy. It may be due to many reasons. Now, later on, you'll see that you could actually use these process swim lanes to use as a Kanban board and document your actual transactions flowing from left to right through this Kanban board. So you receive the assessments, you pass the interview, you send it for the next interview, you then pass the third interview. Now they may fail the interview, in which case they come here. So the power of a value stream map, a simple value stream map like this, is that it can be easily turned into a Kanban board later on to document the flow of every single transaction going through. A great book to read is a book called Visual Meetings, which talks about how effectively you can use sticky notes and idea mapping. Lastly, I'd like to wish you all the best with your sticky notes and your workshopping. It's going to be great fun. Agile value stream mapping is one of the most productive and effective methods that I've ever seen. Thank you.